know, Mrs. Hayes, watching Andy and your daughter dance gets me to thinking about my own wedding reception. It was in an Italian restaurant. And we waltzed to the music of Vinnie Scavelli and his Paisanos. I held Mrs. Colombo in my arms. And she was as light as a moonbeam. Oh, how nice. Did I meet her? Uh, no, ma'am, she's not here. She had to go to Chicago to look after her mother. She fell and broke her hip. Your wife? Uh, no, ma'am, her mother. Oh, poor thing. She was having fun at the time, ma'am, learning how to skateboard. Greetings, Colombo fans. This is Sean. I am a jolly good fellow. I'm a jolly good fellow. I'm a jolly good fellow. Which nobody can deny. And we're recording this episode of the Colombo Confab Podcast live from the Arabian Nights Steam Club. (laughs) You're not going to ask me why I'm so happy and why I'm such a jolly good fellow? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Steve. Why are you happy? (laughs) Because we have a really successful podcast. Oh, the Colombo Confab podcast. We get, you know, we get uh, feedback. Our our numbers are looking great. Uh, I think I th- I'm really happy. I'm I'm ecstatic. Yes, we've gotten some feedback that we'll get to a little bit later today. No, oh, did later we get some today. bad feedback? No, we didn't get any bad feedback. Uh, in fact, uh, um, if anybody wants, <laughs> I'm to waiting. Be, I'm waiting I, for there it. There will the only bad feedback that we have is the fucker who gave us two stars <laughs> on iTunes. Uh, other than, you know, who, who remains nameless, but uh, uh, we'll have uh, a little bit of feedback a little bit later on. But in the meantime, we are going to talk about one of the most maligned episodes of all time, really? No Time to Die. No Time to Die. Starring a yes. bunch of people, none of which is a murderer. Um, well, don't, no, don't spoil it. I know. Oh, you don't think the people <laughs> listening to this are like, oh, well, I want to learn about this through the podcast before I actually watch this piece of television from 1991. 90, I thought it was 92. It might be 92. I don't know. So where were you in 1992, Sean? I was in high school, and I was a junior in high school. How about you? I started, I was in college. I went to a junior college, actually, Okay. Oh, wow. that, that, during that time frame. Yeah. I was working at uh, Electronics Boutique. It was a video game store, and going to... Uh, a community college, local community college. And I was studying... How exciting. <laughs> yeah, I was studying trigonometry and English wow. and probably trying to masturbate 14 times a day, which I'm now down to 14 times a year. So, <laughs> This is why we got the great numbers, folks. This is why we have with these, these terrific insights. <laughs> so what, what some of our listeners may not know well actually all of our listeners will will not know that I was on vacation recently well see I they don't they don't re- make it. well wait hold huh? on they don't know that because this is uh we didn't record for a long time but they actually the, the last time they heard a new episode was a week ago because we released this long after we recorded so ah yeah okay well the reason we we took a little hiatus is because I went to Jamaica uh-huh. and I love the fact that this episode opens with uh, a WB40 song. Uh, did you recognize it at the, uh, at the wedding, at the well, reception? Well, actually, it's, it's, I think it's an Elvis song. It, oh, is it? Yeah, uh, but you're thinking oh, of see, the... I, I, I had WD40, or WD40, UB40. UB40. <laughs> UB40. From uh, the uh, soundtrack of the movie Sliver. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, D- did not know that. Yeah. Uh, um, but I had the Jamaican theme going, that, that, that the Jamaican God. voice in my head, so. And did you know the lead to w, WB40 is UB, white? UB40. UB40. <laughs> did I say WB40? Damn it. <laughs> UB40. Ladies and gentlemen, Steve, he's 92 years old. Like, <laughs> getting words mixed up. 
He's what? Oh yeah, that was. Their I may, thing. I may or may not had too much to drink in Jamaica. I think that UB40. That was their thing. I think they were like a white Jamaican sort of yeah. pop, uh, rap type thing. I wonder whatever happened to them. I don't know. They're gone now. I don't know. Nope. I have no idea. So, yes, this this is one of those Columbo episodes that kind of does its own thing. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm not a fan yeah, of this. There's, this is. Uh, uh, there's three of them. Now, this is the second one that we've done. The first one that we've done is Undercover. I'm not going to say what the third one is, but... Uh, oh, God. Yeah, it's... Uh, so, okay. So, I'm, I'm. you talked about what was I doing in, in 1991 or 92 when this aired. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, I want you to understand something. So, yeah. this was obviously aired where they would have uh, a new episode on every Sunday night for, you know, a, a month or two and... They get, they show at the end of the last episode, which I think is um, death hits the jackpot. They would show you you know previews of whatever was coming up, or they would show it in the during a commercial or whatever. And, mm-hmm. um, there was no indication of what it was about, and I I I remember I specifically remember getting the impression that it was going to be about a bride who commits murder on her wedding night. Which, uh, nope. even though I was wrong, would be a great idea for a Columbo episode. Um, and then I remember watching it when I was... How old would I have been? I would have been 13, 14. And being mm-hmm. intensely angry that it was completely different from any other Columbo episode that I've ever seen before. Um yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm not, you know, that was back when it first aired, and perhaps my feelings have changed since then, just saying. But let's talk about what happens in this episode. Um, right. So, yeah, we start off at a wedding reception. It's uh, Columbo's nephew, Andy. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I didn't get the last name. Uh, but Andy and Melissa. Par- Parma. His, Parma. Parma. Uh, Melissa, uh, his wife. So Andy is a police officer on the LAPD. Uh, and then Melissa is a model, or some kind of model. Yeah. Uh, her father is wealthy. Um, he has what he deals in real estate. Yeah. Uh, kind of like Donald Trump, I guess. Oh, but, yeah, her, <laughs> they are the hottest couple I've ever seen. Like, they are hot. Like, both of them. Like, we know which so, one. So... Okay, go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, oh no, so... So you, you once told me, because this whole, you know, the this Mrs. Columbo exists argument we go <laughs> on and on about. So you've told me there's there's something, there's going to be a scene that's going to prove your point and prove me that I'm wrong. Absolutely. And so I've been waiting for this, this scene, this moment. I, I, every time I, I pop in the DVD and it's an episode I haven't seen, I, I'm looking for it. I'm waiting for it. And I thought this was the episode. This because not, this is not there, we, we, as, as we pull away from everybody having a good time and dancing... At the reception, uh, we see Columbo sitting at a table, talking with an older woman, and they're talking about dancing. And I'm like, "Holy shit, that's Mrs. Columbo!" <laughs> uh, <laughs> then find out until the end of the conversation that's the mother-in-law or Mrs. Hayes, yeah, the mother of the Melissa's brain. mother. Um, <laughs> Very so awesome. I, I th- okay. And, and I, I think this is proof on my side. Oh Jesus! Uh, what? This from this conversation. Here we go. Because. Because where is Mrs. Columbo? You know where Mrs. Columbo is? Chicago. She's so, she, was it Chicago? Yeah. She's visiting her mother who broke her hip skateboarding. That is so fake. That is such a made-up story. <laughs> There's no way. Because the mother has. How old is Columbo? Uh, How old is Columbo? He's got to be. Got to be about the same age as Mrs. Columbo. If we don't, if we don't consider the Kate McGrew thing, um, I would like to say they're about equal in age, so in their seventies. No, Jesus, no. No, the mother of the bride, or the mother and father of the bride, they were in their 70s. I would say that Columbo is probably 60 at this point. Well, the, the, what, uh, my point is that Mrs. Columbo's mother, there's no way she's alive. And there's no way she's skateboarding. Hey, my mother is 65. Her mother is still <laughs> uh-huh. alive. And she's 90, but she's not skateboarding. Is she skateboarding? No. So it's all fake. It's all made up. Okay, that's my point. So End I the story. I, Let's uh, wrap it up and... <laughs> I want to, you know, I uh, I, I want to, the, uh, there's lots of actors that I recognize in this, and you, you brought up the, yeah. the father of the bride, is played by a, a gentleman named Donald Moffat, 
who yes, who, I, who I is that? Thought he was dead, but no, he's still with us now. That's he good. was in a little movie that very popular from 1982 called The Thing. Um, he actually played. Did you ever see The Thing, Steve? Yeah, the um, John, the horror film. John Carpenter. Oh my God, Carpenter. But, yeah, but you love the Alien movies. You got to watch The Thing again. It's really. Oh, you good. know, yeah, that was a good. That was a great he movie. He played the uh, the head, the commander of the base. Um, and that's ah. the, the big thing that I remember him from. He was not one of the survivors, but he's the one that he yells after the blood tests are given, Would you kindly untie me from this chair? Or something to that effect. But, um, yeah. Hmm. And then we meet um, Andy Parma's colleagues, gentlemen of the police force. Did any of them look uh, familiar to you? No. Do you ever watch Frasier? Yes. Okay. Do you remember Briscoe, the guy that had the sports talk show that was on, I can't remember if it was on before or after Frazier's show. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, the guy who played, I want to say is Goodwin or Goodman? Oh, Balding. Sergeant Good- Goodman. Yeah, Balding. Goodman. Uh, he was on Frazier. He was also, uh, fun fact, he was also, if you ever watched the movie Silence of the Lambs, uh, there's a scene where Clarice Starling goes to two entomologists and she wants to learn the uh, where this bug, the bug came from, from the girl's throat. He right. plays mm-hmm. one of them. He plays the the cross-eyed one that sort of asks her out for hamburgers and and beer. Um, nice. So that's uh, the actor's name is. Um, shit, I didn't write it down. Um, but he's uh, Dan, Dan Butler? Butler. Dan Butler, uh, gay by the way. He's gay. Just saying. Oh, he's got to huh. you know call out for the gay folks. That's why he was so uncomfortable at the. Uh... The sauna house. Or that whatever. might explain it. Yes, <laughs> the Arabian Nights twenty four mm-hmm. hour uh, sauna. So I want to go to one of those. <laughs> uh, so I uh, so it's one character we're introduced, and he's kind of recurring. Um, I, I I did recognize his face, but mm-hmm. I don't know what from. Was the photographer Alex? Yeah. So was was Colombo not able to get Paul Glesco to <laughs> take pictures of the wedding, like he asked him? A couple seasons back, I, mean, that, uh, I think that... Paul Galesco has got his hands full right now in the prison sh- prison shower room. Uh, no, that's, I love the fact that you brought up Paul Galesco. We haven't even talked about that episode yet. Uh, no, that guy. <laughs> we have it. I, I know we watched it, but okay. That actor who hmm. plays Alex, the photographer, um, and I got, I want I want to talk some more about him. His name is Daniel <laughs> Davis, and you have seen uh-huh. him from a show from the '90s, a sitcom, uh-huh. a very bad uh-huh. sitcom, in my opinion. Friends? No. Uh, Mr. Sheffield! Uh, don't know. What, the nanny? What is that? The nanny. He, he played... Oh, no! He played the oh, butler on The right. Nanny. And I hated her. I hate her, too. It's okay. Fran Dresser. Fran Dresser. Dresser. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. God. Oh, I forgot about... Why did you remind me? It's okay. No, it gets... I'm going to have to go back on vacation. Okay, I could remind you of Small Wonder... That, that's worse. Come on, Small Wonder. The wait, nanny. wait. He was on Small Wonder. No, he well. wasn't. I'm just saying that that's worse than the nanny. That, but I like Small Wonder. You, anyways. <laughs> I don't know why you liked Small Wonder. <laughs> for those of you who don't let's, know what uh, we're talking, for those of you that don't let's know what we're talking about, just go to YouTube and type in Small Wonder, and you'll know what we're. Yeah. And our our uh, regular listeners that followed us from our Doctor Who podcast will realize that when we start going off topic it's usually because we don't like the particular episode we're reviewing at the moment so we we go off on these weird tangents like we are now well no it's it's it, natural it's what we do in conversation <clears throat> i've we've, we've had compliments avoid about talking this. about colombo oh, yeah. okay well, okay so colombo um so so mother hayes let's talk about mother hayes okay this medication uh, is so a she nuisance. uh she has to take medication we don't know what for. It's just a it's a nuisance to her because she has to go to bed early, right? They never say what's uh, wrong with her. They just say that she takes medication. And she has to go to bed. Uh, it's like she's just sort of like an inconvenience to everybody. Well, she's. I don't understand why this character is in this episode. <laughs> because when when we when we find out about the kidnapping, uh, the father I, I can't think of his first name, Mr. but Hayes, he doesn't want to wake his wife up, and. She's in a different bedroom. They have their own bedrooms. That's nice. When you get older, you probably appreciate that more. Yeah. Uh, yeah and definitely. then we never see her again. Yeah. Did something happen to the actress during and, and the production, that, I wonder? And not only that, he puts her to bed, and then he pours himself a bottle or a glass of scotch or whiskey. 
at like one o'clock in the at morning. One in the morning. Yeah. And then later yeah. on in the episode, he 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 says that he gave her the white lie that he's gone to the hotel gym. Like that's what old people do. They stay up until two o'clock in the morning drinking whiskey, and then they get up really early at six and go. Looking to forward the gym. to it. I can't do that at forty-two. Uh, How could I? But do yeah, but I, there something must have happened to the actress because it's so weird. She's in the very beginning, and then she completely disappears. And they write her off, saying the medicine. She's not feeling well. Why did they even have her? She I don't did know. nothing. See, I, I, when I was watching this, because admittedly I wasn't sure this was going to be a, one of these off Columbo episodes. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, why is, the, why is she going to bed early? I'm all already writing clues down what she's doing. What medicine, or did the father drug her so he could, you know, I'm writing all this down. There's really no reason we found out later. She's just really ill, and you never see her again. Yeah, it's a good point. They could have, it, he could have been a widower, and it would have made no difference whatsoever. Um, because the yeah. whole story takes place in, like, what, 12 hours? So, right. Um. Yeah, and that's another thing. So we we, we have timestamps for every scene, mm-hmm. almost every scene. Did that bother you? Which is a little, it was a little jarring. Really? Um, I didn't like it. It felt intrusive. It wasn't bad. I it was just. I, I did not mind it. I thought it was. Uh, are we diff- watching? Are we watching an episode of Twenty Four? With no, you're right. You're right. It does have that. You know, forty eight hour. That uh, what's the. Uh, you're right. You're absolutely right. It, it reminded me of 24, which did not exist when this came out. No. You have to no. give it just some credit for that. By the way, the, the lady who played the bride, Melissa, do you know her from anything? She is apparently on a very popular no. show that neither of us, I bet, watch. Uh, she plays... Friends. Uh, no. Uh, she plays... Uh, <laughs> I think it's Kevin Spacey's wife on... Um, I'm sorry. We're not supposed to utter his name anymore, apparently. What? She, yeah, I know. He's married? Or... His, was? No, no. She plays his wife in the show. She oh, plays, plays his wife. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> in the in the House of Cards, House of Cards. So interesting. Hmm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. That's so that's a. Fun. No She's been in nothing else. Her, uh, the, the actress's name is Joanna Going. Like I'm, I'm going to get kidnapped. Mm. So, so Andy so. and and Melissa go up to the honeymoon suite. Um, and she says to him, hey, why don't you, she conveniently says to him, why don't you get in the shower while I take off this dress? Yeah. And so, let, let's, so yeah, we were, I just want to say we start with a timestamp at 1040. Yeah. Alex and Melissa. I, I'm writing this down because, again, it's giving me dates and times. So that's got to be important, right? Which it, it kind of is. Uh, so, yeah, they leave, they leave uh, the reception to go consummate their marriage. <laughs> Which, by the way, I don't think they've ever had sex with each other before based on the way that they act. Ah, well, you know, it was the uh, early 90s. Well, I don't know. Uh, you know, I have never been married. Um, but for me, the I, I'm 42 years old. If you get married, I would enjoy the wedding. But I just would feel like there's this obligation when after the wedding that you have to go up to your room and have sex. And trust me, if, you know, maybe if I was 25, I'd feel differently. But I'd be like, let's go to bed now. Let's watch Netflix. <laughs> You've, you've already you've already hit that bottle of scotch. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, okay. Con- consummation, that's great, and that actually gets brought up later, uh, which is? is kind of creepy. Uh, yeah. So, okay, now at eleven ten, uh, Melissa wants Alex to take a shower because you know he's just been sweating on the dance floor and he stinks. He's horny. So, also. he's horny. He goes to take a shower. He, huh? He's horny. Well, he's horny? Yeah. Okay. That's why he takes a shower? Well, no. She wants him to take a shower. So, yeah, you're right. So she can get, maybe she's horny too. But you can tell he is because she's like, well, I have to take this off. He goes, oh, I see what you mean. Oh, I didn't realize that you had the same thing in mind. I'm a jolly good fat. And then he sings. <laughs> yeah, starts singing his stupid song. Uh, so, yeah, he takes a shower at 1140. Uh, and we see later what happens. Because he gets out of the shower and... Uh, Here's another clue, a, a clue that is, doesn't do anything. It's a pointless clue. Why did yeah, they well. show us this? Please explain it to me. But the cologne, where was it say? Um, it's like, uh, enjoy, love, M, I guess, yeah. for Melissa. But I thought that was a clue. And I thought that was extremely stupid of a cop to put something on like that that's just sitting in the in the bathroom. I disagree. 
Uh, okay, so what is this a clue though? Wife. Why why did we see this? It's from his wife. They're in his ho- their hotel suite. But why did we see this? I don't know why we saw it's, it. You're right about it's that. It's a junk clue because I thought it was a clue. Because later on, I was thinking, um, and I haven't seen this in you know until I watched it for this for like ten years. I thought maybe there'd be poison in it. Maybe that's the kidnapper yeah. intended to knock him out. That's what I was because thinking. I knew it was yeah. going to happen, and I thought that was no. That's not what happened at all. Um, no, but it looked awfully weird. Like even, even Columbo says, mm-hmm. picks it up and wants to know what it is. So it, I don't know, but it didn't lead anywhere. It didn't go anywhere. No, it didn't. Um, and then he discovers that she's missing, and he freaks out. He thinks at first that his best man kidnapped her, which I don't think anybody has ever done That's in the creepy. history of weddings. Um, even though it's supposed to be a tradition. And he realizes there is a cotton ball with some chloroform on it. And she's also, there's one shoe, one of her shoes. Um, hmm. So she took her dress off without taking her shoes off first. Interesting. Good Who point. does that? I mean, every time that I wear a dress, no, seriously, is it, can, it, it who takes that, the dress off without taking their shoes and off that, first? And that's another pointless clue because, okay, she, you only see one shoe, right? Yeah. They never found the other shoe. No, they did. Columbo oh, they did? did. Columbo did in the stairwell. That's what made him go down the stairwell and go out into the alley. Oh, oh they I do. That. It's okay. it's a it's used as a clue later on, but it doesn't make any sense. Andy doesn't know what to do. He gets a hold of his uncle, and he comes up. And the, yeah, they, they they go through the motions. Uh, you know, they, they find the the cotton that smells like well, it smells of chloroform. And now I want to bring up a one point here about this is that. Hmm. Columbo was just into his, like, you know, I'm just a regular guy, whatever. And there's this great shot of him walking down the hall towards Andy. And he's like, oh, I was talking to Mr. Hayes, and he wanted to know about some low crime areas, and I wasn't sure. And then he just stops as soon as he gets to Andy, and he says, what's wrong? And then Andy brings him into the into the suite, shows him what's wrong, yeah. and then Columbo instantly snaps into detective mode. Um, yeah, I, I really like that scene, actually. Um so, but the point where he's talking is he talking to himself or is he talking up across the lot or across the hall to Andy when he's coming off the elevator? He's talking to he, Andy. Okay, because he okay. says it. I wasn't real sure if he was talking to himself or what was. He's going like, on oh, there. I talked to Mr. Hayes, blah 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 blah. And frankly, I was really surprised that you would want to see me tonight. What's wrong? Yeah. No, I'm sure he wasn't. He doesn't do that. He doesn't talk to himself. I know that you believe that he has an imaginary wife, but he doesn't talk to himself. <laughs> yeah, is he talking to Mrs. Colombo in this scene? <laughs> um, hey, I think I'm onto something there. No, you're, don't Anyways, go there. Don't go. Just drop so it. So we never see Colombo, and now I'm, now I'm going to start noticing this, but we never see Colombo actually smoke a cigar in this episode. He gives a cigar, a cigar to Andy, but we never see him smoke it. Does he not smoke cigars later? These later episodes? Wow. That's a good question. Um, I mean, because, yeah, it's not good for uh, you. I well, mean, he is get, uh, if Peter Falk is getting up there in the, in the years. So I wonder. I seem to think that know. we saw him smoking a cigar and it's all in the game because they talk about cigars in that episode. Mm-hmm. I I don't know. The answer is I don't really know. We, we um, I don't know. we got to start paying attention to that in these later ones. You know what? It's cigars. interesting because Andy says... Uh, First of all, his wife he realizes that his wife's been kidnapped. Now, if your wife your wife is a beautiful model, she's been kidnapped, and it never occurred to me, but um obviously she's not being held captive and being like sexually assaulted assaulted yet, but common sense says that it's gonna be some sort of sex thing. It's gotta be. And he's extre- oh, yeah. extremely well composed. It, it, it never occurred to me and uh, first thing he asked for from Colombo is a cigarette, and he provides him with a cigar. First thing that I would say is, "Can I? I need a drink. This is just yeah. But <laughs> I need a cigarette and a drink. Yeah. <laughs> but to be to to his credit, he's a cop, and he realizes that they're going to have to do some policing in the next few hours, probably. So he doesn't want a drink. But he, yeah, this is, uh, I you know. I don't know. Yeah. Could you imagine? Like, I would really think that my wife was... I flip. Uh, yeah. She's being raped in the forest preserve and then left for dead. There's no doubt about it. Or, well, we found out she's not going to get raped until a special yeah. moment. It turns out to be a little which, bit Which was creepy, creepy in itself. In it. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, Columbo's on the case. Yeah, he's, he's now in detective mode. And he goes down the firewell, or fire stairs, 
and exits out into an alley. And he, I like how he kind of just, he's looking around. And did you know, notice the overuse of alley cat sound effects? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there were Twice. cats getting it on. There were cats getting it on in that alley. There's, there's no reason for that much... <laughs> that much sound. That much it sound was, coming it from was cats. almost like an alley in Toontown with all the superfluous fluorescent lights and the smoke and the alley cat sounds. Yes. Oh yeah. There was some, and we see it. We, hot cat we hear it again later on. on. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and th- this, and then we meet, we we meet. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go right ahead. I was going to say the same thing. Oh, I was just going to bring up. So we were introduced to Billy. Billy Bailey. Bill Bailey, my favorite character in this whole thing. Now he's been in Columbo before, he right? Yes, yes. Do you recognize? Okay, him? What, what is he? He works at the Beanery. No, no. A uh, long okay. time ago. In our, do you want to guess? Do you remember? I thought he was like one of the guys that that was like a cook at the Beanery no, or serving no, no, chili no. or something. I don't know. He looks like that, but he's not. He actually, okay. I don't know the actor's name. I know he's no longer with us, but. In the episode "Murder a Self Portrait" with uh, the nasty painter, um, mm-hmm. he was the guy that was running the Basset Hound beauty pageant in the beginning of the episode. You you have no oh. memory of this, and that's oh, okay just... because he's on screen in that episode for all of like ten seconds. No, no, I remember the episode. That's the one. Yeah, I remember what you're talking about. I just don't remember him in that. He's in it. that part of the. Yeah, he's there. He's in that scene. Yeah, with the Basset Hounds. Yeah. He's the guy, he, I think he says something to Columbo like, oh, what a beauty. And Columbo's like, yeah, I got my dog. And that's when the dog like nips at Columbo and Columbo's all worried. Thinks that yeah. he'd be jealous. Uh, but he's in that. That's the only episode that I know of that he's in. Oh, okay. I thought he was more of a regular. No, uh, no, no. So, yeah. I, and, and of course, the uh, he references a song. It's Call Me Bill, mm-hmm. right? Bill Do you remember that? I don't know that. He says, why... Everybody uh, says, why don't you go home, Bill Bailey? Like, they've always said it the first time. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know the song. I'm assuming it's a really old song that we don't know. It, 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 isn't it... You just call me Bill. Isn't that the one with Paul Simon? I don't know. I don't know. And... Okay. And, and uh, Garfunkel? Simon Garfunkel? You're thinking of Yeah, that? it's like one of those. Yeah. I would say check the show notes, but we don't do that kind of shit. So maybe I'll just, no. you know... Uh, but anyways, Bill Bill saw a white van oh, leave at eleven thirty. But the scene where Columbo enters this nasty kitchen where it's after hours at a restaurant and Bill obviously he's a night worker, he comes in, he cleans up all the dishes. Um I really like the character and he actually because Columbo just sort of lets him talk. Um he mm-hmm. talks about the windows, there's dirt in the windows, but Everything that he, he says, wa- he watches the bus boys oh, make out God, with the yes. steward. Well, okay, the, the, there's and... that, and he eats some <laughs> lettuce that's left on a plate <laughs> because there's nothing greater than lettuce left on a plate. Lettuce, the best food in the world, especially mm. when it's left over. Um, I just love that scene, and I, I, I just, I really like that character, and we see a little bit more of him later on. Um, yeah, but he is. Uh, you asked me a long time ago. Is there ever an episode where uh, instead the murderer is sort of a, a blue collar guy? Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, Bill Bailey is not a murderer, but we see Columbo deal a lot with blue collar people in this episode, a lot. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure a lot of it works, but I definitely think that this episode, or um, this episode, this scene with Bill Bailey works. I love I love the guy. You don't. See I him. thought it was done well. Yeah. No, I like this scene. I did like this scene. Yeah. Yeah, I like I like Bill as well. Um, but yeah, the 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 scene he comes back later in the episode that's probably my my favorite. Uh, but anyways, we we now jump to a new scene with Melissa. Now she's in your favorite sexual fantasy. I mean, she's in bondage. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, she, she's in a, a really attractive person by the way i'm just that's uh, what i said earlier yeah and then later on we see her in her underwear trapped in a in a room in a house somewhere and uh, yeah and at this point um, at this point i'm like thinking he's going this the guy uh the, the kidnapper is gonna rape her i mean i i'm i just i'm sure of it you know uh thankfully not yeah we find out there's a reason why to that well 99 99.9 percent 
of the time nowadays i bet they that he would rape her and i'm sure that's what she was thinking Mm -hmm. Uh, but he doesn't and um okay so the kidnapper um first of all i want to ask you this did you get sort of a creepy gay vibe from him uh well when he was like putting lipstick on well that that kind of that was was a clue but i thought right off the bat (laughs) creepy gay vibe okay um and so I Rud- Rud- Rudolf Arnold Strauss. So if you go into the credits on IMDb and the mm-hmm. credits of this episode, he is not credited. And I have actually researched on t- on uh, on the internet to Ooh, find out. You researched, okay? Yeah, research. It's this thing where, like, when you're going to watch something and you need to talk about it, you kind of do it. You need to talk about <laughs> uh-huh. it. Um, go on the internet or whatever, Wikipedia at least. And, no, I have no idea who this actor is because I thought he did a remarkable job, and I really wanted to see what else he's been in. Um, oh yeah, he he's very good looking in sort of a '90s way with the haircut, mm-hmm. um, but creepy as fuck all. I mean, he's no Hannibal Lecter, but uh, man, oh man, yeah. And we find well, yes. Yeah. No, go on. When was wait? When was Silence of the Lambs released? Do you know? Nineteen ninety one. Okay, I wonder if this episode was influenced by that movie to some degree. No, no, it was based in a story by Ed McBain, um, who, oh, who right, also wrote right. the story That's that Undercover right. was based on, and it was from a series of novels. Um, they decided at some point, shortly before this was aired, that they were going to take a couple stories from that series of novels and you know make them into Columbo stories, and mm. um, which is. I don't know why they made that decision. I don't know if they were thinking that they, that was going to be like an ongoing thing, um, because there's nothing as un-Columbo as this story. Um, but we'll yeah. get to that a little bit later, I think. So yeah, so we're introduced to Rudolph. Um, uh, he's he's introduced kind of with a in the shadows with a surgeon mask and a scalpel. Mm-hmm. So you're thinking right off the bat, he's a doctor, or he has to do something with a, maybe he's a nurse or something but he has to do deal with that field um uh so he's a little creepy it's weird he only has this one instrument well admittedly a scalp is scary as scary as hell i uh, but if that's his only weapon i'm kind of surprised he got as far as he did with that well no I think he, melissa was he, a bit uh, well he oh he God. chloroformed her so he was able to carry her down the stairs but there were a couple of scenes where she i mean yeah she probably would have gotten scarred up but uh, she could have gotten out of there, I think, if she just decided to, to kick him in the balls. Um, well, she was she was groggy and she was scared. Yeah, yeah. Um, just saying. I don't know. I, I, you know what? I'm just saying. Um, but he he does something when she wakes up. She, you know, it's in this bare room. He tells her not mm-hmm. to scream because he's got the the the, the and um, he has water for her. Which he is drugged, by the way, but he says, uh, oh, you must be thirsty with that tape on your mouth. And he goes to give her water, and he goes, you must be thirsty. And at some point, he says to her, come on, silly, silly. Hmm? I'm like, okay, well, why is he calling her <laughs> silly, silly? Um, and then he gives her the water, and then she passes out, and then he goes to work or something uh, yeah. uh, so uh, one of the notes that I wrote down was okay so if you are a homicidal maniac who kidnaps a girl and plans to murder her why would well, you no, marry her or marry, marry, her? marry her and then murder her consummate yeah, and, then, and then kill her. Yeah. why would you go to work on the last day of your life and it didn't occur to me until later that oh no no you're, no he went to work and he was fired because the night before he stole an ambulance so why did he go to work the day that he was going to die? What was the point yeah. of that? I don't know. Why bother? <laughs> I mean, if I know that I'm going to die at like, you know, 8 o'clock tonight or 8 o'clock, it's Monday, I wake up, I'm going to die at 8 o'clock, am I going to go to work? I'm like, fuck no. 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 <laughs> Screw that. I'm going to the liquor yeah. store. <laughs> uh, so we see that they're setting up the phone uh, tap in... Um, Andrew's uh, hotel room. Uh, so I guess they're expecting a ransom. That's where that's the yeah. only lead they have. So yeah. This has been a kidnapping. There's going to be a ransom. Okay, so I've got to ask you this, Steve, because this is yeah. what I thought. I remember watching this. 
Did you think before we were actually introduced to the kidnapper that Alex, the photographer, somehow had yes. a role in this? Absolutely. Okay. Because he, he just seemed he seemed kind of creepy. Yes, he did. Um, his insistence at having a photograph with her right before they went up in the elevator and all that. And I have a theory that I think Columbo may have thought he was involved as well. Well, he did because there was the scene, if we jump ahead a little, uh, where he goes to uh, Alex's house, which, by the way, for a photographer, lives in a very nice home. Um, he lives in the same house, by the way. Um, the the uh-huh. interior has the same props as uh, Sean What's-His-Faces from Columbo Cries Wolf, Sean of Bachelor's World. There's a huge, gigantic huh. vase in the uh, in the hall of the home, and I recognize that prop prop from that episode. Keep going. I'm sorry. He got it in an estate sale, I guess. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what were we talking about, Alex? So yeah, there, there's a point where Columbo's not letting anybody know is that, uh, that that there's been a kidnapping. He's just letting people know that the father is going to owe them a big favor. Mm-hmm. There's something that's happened. And, and so, but you, you notice he's asking questions to see how they react to like, oh, well, you think Melissa and Andrew are uh, on their way or having a good time on their honeymoon to see how they react to that kind of comment to see if they go, what do you mean? Or, oh yeah, I bet they're, they're leaving now. Or, you know, I, I think he was testing them with that. Mm-hmm. He wanted to see how they re- would react. Cause I think at this point, Columbo has no idea, um, Actually, we don't. E- we don't even know. We don't really have an idea who Rudolph is. Sure. I, the whole time, I'm thinking, this, it's got to be somebody at the beginning. They, matter of fact, they even throw that out there as a lark. They go through the, excuse me, the um, the photos. They pairing up people, which is a good exercise. Uh, that was pretty cool. Yeah, it was. But yeah, and they fig- figure out that he's the only one that's not accounted for. But if you go back and you watch it again, he's not in any of the wedding scenes in the beginning. Which is sort of a cheat. Like, even yeah. if you want... There's this old movie from the same time as this came out called Copycat. And they don't cheat there. We see the killer in the background in a lot of the earlier scenes. But even there's a scene where... Um, oh, I'm sorry, not a scene. But the scene where Alex insists on um, Andy taking a picture of him and Melissa. Um, it would have been nice to see the kidnapper in the background in that scene. Because he shows up later in the photograph. Yeah. But... I agree. Yeah. I wonder why they didn't do that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Well, so the uh, the scene where um, where we're, you were talking earlier about Randolph giving Melissa the water, but that the scene that Rudolph that opens Rudy, with that Rudy. Rudolph um, that opens is with the t- she's laying down in, in a darkened room, and you hear a tea whistle go off. <sighs> That was tense, don't you think? Yes, I, I, it was really good. The I, I liked every scene with with Rudolph oh. or Rudy, whoever. You, I just I, love, I, 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 I can't get with over a, the fact that you're calling him by his proper name, especially at this point in the episode. We don't even know what his name is. He's just the creepy yeah. kidnapper guy. The, yeah. <laughs> but I, every scene he's in, like you said, he he really did an excellent job. Yeah. I mean, every scene he was in, he was it was intense yeah you didn't know what he was going to do you didn't know what he had done and, and you didn't know where he was going and that makes that and really she, creepy and then did open her, with that, she, that that tea the tea steam whistle going off like a scream and she wakes up to that 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 was really dark and she to her to the actress's credit does a really good job of somehow being scared and like trying to be in control at the same time um, when she's with him because she can mm-hmm. tell she's c- trying to sort of placate him so he doesn't hurt her um, when he leaves and she's alone she takes control back not just because she escapes momentarily but because you can just see the actress change um, she did a really good job um, um, speaking of science didn't you know though she was going to get caught <laughs> oh uh I, I yeah. He kept waiting, yeah, because she's trying to figure out how to get. Okay, he goes to work. She's trying to figure out how to get out of that room. She has no idea what's on the other side of that bedroom door, but it's locked. Uh, so she's she's trying to be clever. She is clever, in getting out of that room, 
but the whole time she's there, I'm thinking, hurry, hurry, hurry! I yeah. couldn't. I was so impatient for her to get those damn yeah. uh, pegs out of the door uh, joints or whatever you call that. Uh, but yeah, that was intense. The hinges. And, and I just knew. I was like, you know, by the, the time she gets the last one, hinges, yeah, once she gets the last one off, he's gonna be right behind that door. I just know it. I just know it. No, he wasn't. No, she. She. You, what she does. Speaking what of, she so does. You, is so, do you okay, think? I'm sorry. You, go ahead. You, 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 no, please. I was going to say, when she does that, when she gets the hinges off, she does exactly what I would have done, which is try to open the door with a doorknob, and which doesn't work because the fucking door is locked. And she instantly says, you stupid idiot. And then she opens the door by grabbing it from the bottom and wrenching it off, which is what she, you know. Um, but yeah, very organic. Uh, but what were you going to say? Yeah. Oh, no, that... Uh, so this is after that scene uh this is when we're introduced to my second favorite character of this episode oh i know who it is T- tubby yeah <laughs> tubby <laughs> at the arabian night sauna okay so does a place like this actually exist beyond a gay bathhouse you don't know the is answer. it a gay bathhouse i don't think it's a gay bathhouse but because he because there's a later scene where he's getting a full body massage with a girl in a like um uh, what's the word? Like a massage? Yeah, but it, the, the girl's dressed she's up. She's in a like a dressed up in Arabian Nights, like type, an Arabian uh, with the, uh, Mr. With the turban and yeah. the and the like Aladdin or yeah. No, not turban, but she no, but she has the like a belly dancer kind of thing. Yeah, but anyways, exactly, yeah. uh, Columbo should. So I'm thinking, Tuba, Tubby reminded me of Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> He's over there, you know, eating, sweating. Um, but the kid. <laughs> but think about it. What time is it when, uh, what's his name? Goodman? Groom. Sergeant Goodman? Sergeant Goodman goes to visit him in the sauna. It's like 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning. And this is what this guy does with his Sunday nights as he just goes and hangs out in this 24-hour Arabian night sauna that's so skeevy. Um, places like that do exist. I've been in them, but it hasn't been like t- for like 20 years. But uh, they're exclusively for gay men. I don't know that the, but the the lobby of the place is all made up like one of those, um, like one of those tents in Raiders of the Lost Ark. That's what I was reminded of. Like they were gonna mm. walk in and find Marion all tied up, and the 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 Mater D, for lack of a better word, is all dressed up with, and he's got the hair. It was just laughable. I'm gonna say it was laughable. It was hilarious. But Tubby, that was goofy. But Tubby, yeah. he's laying there. Oh, the sauna, the the sweat. It's good for the fat. <laughs> well, there was when uh, Sergeant uh, Goodwin or Goodman uh, walks into the sauna. He's you know he, he, you can tell he's uncomfortable. He's in a towel, and and all of a sudden you hear somebody like hitting fat. Uh-huh. And what it is is Tubby slapping his gut with his hand, like, "Hey, I'm over here!" Like, <laughs> call his attention. Oh. It's just gross. Yeah. And he did it a few times. He would slap himself in the gut and make that slapping sound. Um, ugh. And he was there all night because later on he's making a phone call while he's getting a massage. Probably a rub and tug. But, uh, <laughs> oh, the, re- the reason that they go there, I can't remember. For, for I think it's because Andy shot a guy and Goodman goes to find out where that guy is oh, now. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, and, that was totally a mislead and too. Tubby, what? okay, and it, okay. Yeah, and then we see Patrick Swayze's brother, Don Swayze, for about <laughs> ten seconds on screen. <laughs> even though he's got second billing of this episode in IMDb. Now, okay, so they go, they find out that Don Swayze. I don't know what the guy's the character's name is, but he he booked into this hotel with a chicky, a chicky, and she was kind of like out of it. And so, oh, God. And part of me is like, this is a decent scene, you know, topically, but like so un ish Columbo and his, uh, his nephew, they storm into this guy's uh, skeezy hotel room. And he peeked up some uh, tweaker the night before in a bar. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, she's like totally like going into, uh, what do you call it? Uh, 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 the shakes. What do you call that? Um, remit? Not remission. God damn it! When you haven't had drugs for a while, she's going into uh, 
Her name is Jack Skeffington. She's going to, uh, she's going into, uh, yeah. So she really needs drugs is what I'm saying. And they, they break in there and they're, they're in there listening to some groovy eighties rock music, which the police turn off as soon as they barge into the place. They put a gun yeah. in Don Swayze's hand. And then Columbo has a short conversation with the tweaking lady and says, where'd you meet him? Last night at a bar, the ball game was on. I know that. Well, okay. Um, Where'd you find this? And he pulls out a little thing of cocaine or crystal meth or whatever. Is this yours? <laughs> yes. Can I have it? Oh, she's in remission. That's what I was. Can I have it? And then he just says, book them. And then boom, cut to the next scene. Okay, that's awesome and so yeah. un-Columbo-ish at the same time. Huh. Anyway, go ahead. Oh, no, no, I was just... I was thinking about that scene as you were talking about it um i yeah I, I just didn't like it i guess i didn't like that scene just because it didn't go anywhere with the plot yeah it was a red it, was, it seemed like a really weird thing like the they there was either two reasons why melissa was kidnapped it was either andy had arrested or shot somebody's brother and so they wanted to get revenge on andy or uh because melissa's father or melissa came from a rich family and the father had a lot of money uh, so it was one of those two reasons for the kidnapping, which it uh, turns out wasn't either. Yeah. It was, Did you realize that? The, the the two main, not leads, but the two main uh, situations they were exploring with what what why kidnapping, that it was neither. It was just some crazy screwed up guy. But a third motive that they didn't even think of is that they, he, she was just killed by some sort of random person who wanted to rape her but if he got into the hotel room and chloroformed her that's not what some random rando would do by the way how did he get into their hotel room uh well he good question it's never explained hmm. was he there before they got there or did he get in? Yeah, because he barged in. Cause, yeah, because they show a flashback of him char- charging her with the the, the scalpel. Uh, but was he hiding? Well, the fact that he was dressed up. Oh, no, I don't know. That's never explained. Yeah. Anyway, I am not going to think about it too much. I'm just going to. So let's talk about Rudy's uh, family. Oh God. Uh, his yeah. This is this is pretty messed up. Um, so he was a young boy. Uh, he walks in on his dad, who's a doctor or was mm-hmm. a doctor, slicing his mother's throat open with a scalpel. Mm-hmm. The uh, the father then sees that sees the son walk in, witnessing the whole thing. I guess is terrified that his son saw it, and so then sl- slices his own throat with the same scalpel. Mm-hmm. As you do and. Yeah, so here we go. We've got this young kid has witnessed this, and apparently he had he was supposed to go to medical school. He was, you know, he did go to medical school, mm-hmm. right? Uh, to be a doctor. And not only that, uh, you find out later uh, they they find out what school he went to because they're trying to figure out who he is. Ramsey College. Yeah. And it's in the yearbook. I think I wrote this down somewhere. Uh, most likely to dissect a friend. That is not good. <laughs> this guy needs to have um, uh, constant checkups from the local authorities. Well, okay, so obviously he must have been in foster care. He was probably raised by a foster family who was either willing, you know, well, he had the motivation to go to school. And by the way, you don't, they, they say Ramsey College. I don't know if it was a medical school or what, but... Um, yeah, not good, not good. I suspect that this guy has probably dissected a few cats before he even got to college. Oh, jeez. Um, yeah, no, this guy's messed yeah, up. This, this, this is he, a problem. He's got a messed up shit. Yeah. Um, he's got a messed up history. Uh, he's very unstable. And I think one of the reasons that makes this character so uh, intense, like I said earlier, uh, he, he he's just messed up. This is not a guy you want to bump into in an alley. He's the kind of guy that no. will just... Kind of like Jack the Ripper. He's he's Jack the Ripper. Yeah. He will just dissect you to see how that works. And that kind of 
the first time I was watching this, and when I say first time, I mean for this podcast, I thought, why does he live in such a shitty place? And then it occurred to me the second time that I was watching it that he probably yeah. doesn't live there. He probably bought it or mm-hmm. rented it just for the purpose of abducting her and then refurbished hmm. the bedroom. No, no, no. That was his home because that's uh, when they f- went to the college and they found his address. That was the You're address. You're right. But, but so this is yeah. a guy who goes to work every day, even the day that he plans to kill himself, and he leaves his house in such a, dis- a state of disrepair that the front door doesn't even close? Right. Wait, uh, you know what? When, when, when Melissa gets out of that room, okay, now we're and go she goes this. to the front door, and it's uh, the front door is locked. No, 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 no. I wrote this down. I... Yeah, I. It's okay. Yeah, I, I. I wrote this down too when I when I first mm-hmm. watched it because when he leaves to go to work, um, the door is half open and it's like just sort of falling apart and he leaves. And then when she tries to get out, it's locked. Um, but mm-hmm. it when he actually leaves before he goes out through the creaky, crumpy front door, he actually had a door installed in the back of that room that led out to the rest of the house, and that's the that's the door. And he locks it before he leaves, and that's the door that she bangs on. That's I thought that too oh. until the second time I, I noticed it. Um, I don't know why they bothered. Why couldn't they just make it the front door? Um, yeah, but why? Yeah, why? Why? Why does the door have to be broken? Like, whatever. Why does the dude uh, live like that? <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't get it out of my head. And so, yeah, uh, Rudolph uh, keeps calling uh, Melissa my love, my sweetheart. Um, you know this there, the scene where she's waking up from the sleeping pill after she's been drugged. Uh, he provided her something to eat, a salad with some uh, uh, vinegar and oil. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, he he leaves a note. He said, "I left you some diet food," and then in parentheses, "ha ha." I, yeah. Why was that? Ha ha. I don't understand diet uh, food. Uh, maybe he thought she was too fat. I don't know. <laughs> but but yeah, so I thought it was really clever. I didn't know vinegar would. Dissolve rust. Did, did you? Neither did I. Is that a thing? I guess it's a thing, but uh, <laughs> I'm going to think about it. Actually, yeah, let me... so I thought that was really clever. But, you know, she's got that vinegar and oil she's got going on all over her hands. There's no way she can open a doorknob <laughs> or work uh, a fork to, you know, without slipping all over the place. I was going to say, and she's lubing up the hinges up and down with her hand. And then the hinge is about to come, or not the hinge, but the whatever goes inside the hinge, it's about to pop out. And she's going, come on, come on, come on. I thought it was slightly erotic, if I may may say myself. I didn't didn't even play with that team. You did did not pick up on that? Maybe. Uh, (laughs) And then, of course, he 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 has a... will tonight. Okay, but go on. He he does have a... So, Rudolph does have favorite music. It's polka. (laughs) Anybody that listens to Polka, yeah, you're a serial killer. I mean, that's just... Let's get that out of the way. I mean, that's that's just creepy. Who listens yeah. to Polka? Because if you listen to Polka... Except for that one yeah. listener... Except for that one listener who just turned us off. Yeah, in Warsaw. <laughs> but, okay. It's okay. I'm Polish. I can say that. Uh, but, yeah, so that whole scene where she's, she's trying to get out... Man, my... I was... That was intense. And they would cut to another scene with Columbo doing whatever. I'm like, no, no, get back to that scene. I want to see what happens. Because I just knew he was going to be on the other side of that door. Thankfully, he wasn't. Um, so she was able to look around. She went into the kitchen. And when she went in the kitchen, my first thought was, look for a steak knife. Look for a butcher knife. Something. Like, def- get something to defend yourself. That's the first thing she should have done. She went in that kitchen. Don't you think? I agree. Yes. I did not think that. Get, I don't remember Get that a fact, knife. But yeah, okay. I agree. Yeah. Because she doesn't know where the fuck he is. He could be right in the other room. Yeah, he could be. And it's, I thought he would It's kind of like in... You ever see the movie Misery? Yes. When he gets out of his room? Yeah. And his wheelchair? It's... And... Yeah. And that's when he gets hobbled. <laughs> yeah. Because the, uh, the penguin always faces do so. What? That's how he knows that he was out and about in her house because she's got a little miniature penguin and he topples it, catches it, and puts it back and she figures out that he's been out because her penguin always faces due south. 
and he put it down the wrong way and that's when she huh. hobbles him great movie great movie oh i thought we were talking okay gotcha academy award uh, winning uh performance by kathy bates yeah oh she was wonderful in that yeah. uh what, what 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 happened now okay oh so yeah so she then she goes into his bedroom so yeah i see you said you got a a a, a homosexual vibe oh, from rudolph totally. yeah but but why is he got uh he's got a um what do you call it slide projector i don't know what you call those machines but it's yeah. all photos from her modeling career uh it's just playing on a loop continuously yeah. and you know he's probably been pleasuring himself okay, okay. for so, hours so, in that okay, room okay so there are uh, uh this is what i get i think that he's gay and that he has an mm-hmm. obsession with her the same way that gay men have an obsession with Madonna or Cher or Barbara Streisand. And before you all reach conclusions and say, well, that's a very homophobic podcast. And you know what? We haven't gotten, that's a very racist podcast. So I'm going to assume that it's, we're not being homophobic. I'm gay. Um, but, uh, you know, there are yeah. gay men that just sort of have an obsession with women, particularly really beautiful women. And it's not mm-hmm. because they want to fuck them. It's because they just want to be them. Okay. Especially mm. when he talks about his mother, he apparently has an, an obsession with his uh, about his mother and the way that she died. Um, yeah, if he you, wanted to recreate that. Yeah. yeah, if you read the novel The Silence of the Lambs, which I read about the time that this episode came out, um, mm-hmm. the killer Buffalo Bill in that novel um, had an obsession with his grandmother. Okay. Was that in the booth in the movie? It in was. The book, it was. In, it was book? in the book. It wasn't in the movie. Uh, so I don't think that it, the idea of having sex with her after they were married, having consummated the relationship, I think that was just sort of a procedure for him, and what we need to do to be together because she's so fucking fabulous and pretty. This is my theory. However, yeah. However. Later on, right before it ends, we see him in bed with her, and he actually does not embrace her the way that he actually goes down with his hand. And I mean, I realize that she's not comfortable with him touching her anywhere, but I think he goes down in the JJ right away, um, which would not be what a gay man would do. He would probably embrace her. And but I, uh, I don't know. I don't know what kind of person we're dealing with. Well, and the lipstick is yeah. is is really uh, tell. I mean, like, oh, let's look see what it looks like on me. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, he puts the lipstick on. as they're getting dressed for their mock wedding. Yeah, uh, I like that he was wearing a wet, white tuxedo, and I'm thinking to myself, that's probably appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> And, and the, pretty the, sure the, he's never had sex. The bed is all white and really, probably, really expensive white satin. Um, mm-hmm. Once it gets sprayed with blood, it will probably look even more creepy. Um, and yeah. what's so awesome is in that scene where he makes her put the lipstick on and then puts it on himself. The first time I watched it, I was watching him. But if you watch her her reaction is really good she is clearly in a state of shock she, really she no yeah because i'm watching him i don't i don't even remember what what expression she must have had sec- on her face I, yeah the second time i watched it she she does a really good job of just being in fucking shock like i don't even know what to do so but yeah well uh so yeah so at this point it's if it's not apparent before it is now there is a time uh, there's there's a time frame, not a time frame. What's a what's a word I'm looking for? That Columbo and the LAPD have a very limited time. Yeah, it's something bad is about to happen, and if they don't get to her in probably in the le- next ten hours or whatever, she's going to be dead. Yeah, it probably probably hor- horribly raped, uh, probably butchered. Um, I mean, her her future looks really bad. It's yeah. not not a very good uh, place to be for her. Fortunately for Melissa. Uh, so I don't know. Yeah, you kind of root for Columbo and for Andrew to kind of get on the ball and and get the clues, and they finally get a good lead. Um, you know, they they are able to figure out 
uh, that there's this one guy who doesn't belong in the photos, and he seems awfully suspicious in, in the background of these photos. And they do a blow up of of his of a college ring he's wearing, which I don't even think you can. Can you do that? Can you blow it up to that be that clear? Well, to read I, the I, letters I, off of a ring. I don't know, but there was a movie that was made way before this called Blow Up, where they do the same thing. So, mm-hmm. in movie world, why not? I don't know. Okay, but uh, yeah, they can see that he went to Ramsey College, and so that that they find because there's been a lot of mis missteps. With, with Tubby giving them, you know, even though Tubby's not giving them wrong information, that's just, they're barking up the wrong tree with Tubby. Uh, the, uh, all the other clues, like with Patrick Swayze's brother, that goes nowhere. Mm-hmm. Um, but they finally now on the right lead. They, they're finally starting, things are starting to fall into place, and they're not, you want them to fall into place faster, because you realize Melissa's time is very short. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, they so they go to the college. They're able to find a yearbook. They're able to. Uh, I cannot imagine going through how many years of yearbooks looking for one face. Mm-hmm. Th- that must have been crazy. Mm-hmm. But uh, but yes, they finally found their man. They get the address. Now this is where uh, when you said silence. Of, actually, we brought up silence of the lambs a couple of times. In this podcast, but I'm going to bring it up again because I thought for sure that the twist would be, or the the a setback would be, they've got his home address, and I'm thinking to myself, well, that's probably not where he's at. He's probably like you you originally mentioned. Oh yes, that's rented right. Rented something else. Silence of the Lambs. That's right. It happens in Silence of the Lambs. Yeah, yeah they got an address. They're rushing to, and, 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 and as she's knocking on the door, as Jodie Foster's knocking on the door, it, it, you're waiting. You the. Uh, uh, Buffalo Bill ha- hears a knock at the door, mm-hmm. but it's two separate s- situations. It's not the same house. And I thought that's where they were going with this. And I wrote that in my note. Silence of the Lambs. There's going to be a twist. Thankfully not, because she would have been dead at this point. But uh, So yeah, they're able to finally locate it. And I never quite understood, and maybe you can explain it to me, the, the problem that Columbo had with the captain. He wanted, what he wanted to go in, like, sirens blaring and Oh do you, yeah, do you remember yeah. that? Um, they're they're going, well, so they're driving wh- down the highway or whatever, and Columbo says to the captain, who seems to be sort of this all everything's in, we're gonna go in, storming in, and they're sirens. And Columbo says to, something to him like, you know, you got a lot of new guys in the force, you're going in loud. His theory is if I think that if they go in, sirens blazing, that will give the kidnapper. Yeah, a clue, or you know. But what, but what was the captain like? That what was? I didn't understand why he was being so um, dismissive of Columbo. I don't know, but I'm. I think that was either a hangover from the story this may have been based on, or the the story mm-hmm. this was based on, or perhaps they were trying to put in a little bit about Columbo telling his superior what to do. That Columbo is actually smarter than his superior, which does not go over well. Not not go over well with the superior, but it does not go over well for the audience because to me it seemed very out of place. It it did. It, yeah. it, it I, I didn't want to see that conversation. Things were ramping up for Melissa and Rudolph and I wanted to see what was going to happen next. I mean he was getting crazier. Just I, I just love that you keep calling crazy. him Rudolph. I just love that you keep calling him Rudy. Uh, Rudy, you want me to call him Rudy? Well, <laughs> just call whatever. Him the crazy dude with lipstick. Okay, um, <laughs> it has a fetish for white satin. Um, but yeah. So, so I didn't. I I, I I didn't want to see that. I wanted to see where Melissa and Rudy were. You know what was happening with them? <laughs> because it was gonna. Ha- it was happening any moment. As a matter of fact, he asked. You know, to repeat the he's he was the doing the sermon. He was being the preacher and the 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 groom. Um, and of course, she refuses to take off her wedding ring. Mm-hmm. Um, and so he kind of nicks her uh, with with the scalpel, I guess, to show mm-hmm. her he means business. And he's going to kill her no matter what, you know. And of course, at the last minute, just as he's about to do whatever to her, rape her or whatever. After he's yeah, that, touched that, her, that was I think that was what was going on. Yeah, uh, the police come in, Columbo and his and his and his nephew. Nephew shoots the guy dead, 
He's dead. Right as he's about to just sort of nail Melissa with a scalpel. And uh, Columbo says, what time is it? And we see the time. and That's it. That's it. <laughs> and then credits. Roll credits. Roll credits. Um, Did you not like the guy, the cop, that jumped through the glass window? <laughs> I didn't even notice that. Did he really jump through the glass window? Not not, not Andy, but there was another police officer. As, as the cops are going into the house, huh. um, there's one that jumps through a, one of the uh, black painted windows. This, that was just random. Oh, there's something else that we forgot to bring up is that um, Bill Bailey comes up later. Um, yes. Okay, yeah. So the second scene. Yes, yeah, very funny because they know Bill has seen a white van. So they go to all the dealerships to get catalogs. And, and uh, they, it, Columbo brings these catalogs to Bill Bailey to show him pictures so he can mm-hmm. recognize the van that he saw parked out of. Now, okay. Uh, uh, and Bill Bailey is staying with his sister at this really run-down L.A. house, L.A.-type house. And so Columbo wakes him up by knocking on his bedroom door. And Bill Bailey does not live in a nice place window. with his sister. I'm sorry, in the window. No, it, yeah. Um, I think it's an, an interesting that in, in that scene, uh, it's an ambulance. Okay, first of all, that's that. And also that all the places, most of the places that Columbo goes to, with the exception of the hotel at the beginning, and of course, Alex, the photographer's place. Oh, there's something else I forgot to mention about him. But um, Bill Belly lives in a really shitty place. We see Columbo go to some really shitty places, um, including the place where Bill Bailey is, 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 is spending his nights. Um, I want to also talk about the scene where he goes to Alex, the photographer's office with the editor, mm. and the receptionist will not let him into their office because they're trying to assemble all these photographs for a, a spread for the next issue. And he walks in, introduces himself to the editor, and says something to Alex like, Well, we had quite a night last night, sir. Or what the nice time we had last night, or something to that effect. Yeah, something like that. And then, Applying, yeah. and then la- later on, uh, you know, like a minute later, she goes, "Well, I just want to hear about the nice time you had last night." Like, <laughs> and I didn't. I, I have seen this more than twice. I've seen it maybe five times, and I've never picked up on that. That the way that he comes in, barges in, talks to the editor. And I can't remember her name, but. And the way that he references Alex sounds like they had some sort of one night stand the night before and not, you know, set up and looked at photographs. But um, I'm sorry. I don't know where I was going with this, but that was just a couple points I had to make. All right. I can't remember who went first for Ransom of a Dead Man, but I think it was you, but I'm not sure. Do you remember? Okay. No, I don't remember. I sure don't. Well, I'll just ask you and then you start. No. You want me to Follow go first? Up, that's okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, you have to say how much we have to uh, rate it out of. Right. So I'm going to pick. I like picking numbers from the episode. I just I think that's more fun instead of saying one out of ten. Uh, but uh, so I'm going to pick a number from this episode. What would you rate this one out of 134? And by the way, any clue or any idea where the 134 came from? Um, I thought you were going to say 1738, but no, I don't know where the 134 came from. <laughs> That is the address of Bill's sister's home. Oh, nice. It was 134. Ooh, ooh, nice. Very good, sir. Um, so, 134. What would you rate this one? I'm going to give this a, uh, a 100. No, I'm, I'm going to give this a... Oh, God, this is really hard. <laughs> there, You know what? I'm going to give this a... Uh, okay, so, okay, so I'm going to explain why I'm going to give this score first. All right, so uh, as I explained, when I first saw this when it was on TV, I was outraged that this is this is not a Columbo episode. This is ridiculous. This is nothing like a Columbo episode, and it's not. It's not. Um, you could... There are no Columbo... There's no Columbo shit in here at all. Um, uh, he drives the car at one point. At one point, he does say to Alex, the photographer, oh, just one more thing, sir... And that's pretty much it. It's based on yeah. a short story by somebody else. Um, 
This is often compared to Undercover, or not compared, but grouped with Undercover as the one that we don't talk about in Columbo canon. Um, and I remember when we talked about Undercover, I said, well, you know what? I like this more than I thought I would, mm-hmm. but it's a lousy piece of television. No one's going to ever remember it, <clears throat> and that's true. But that does not, this is not true with this. This is a really good piece of television that is worthy of any like crime procedural show. And you know what? I'm going to lay this out right now. I don't watch CSI. I don't watch NCIS. I don't watch your however many 12 crime dramas there are now. But this really hit the button for me. I really like this. Um, there's no way that I'm going to say that this is the best 90s Columbo ever. Um, there's yeah. I, I'm not going to say that if this didn't exist... Uh, if it didn't exist, we would never know. It's. It. However, everything is there for this to be a good piece of television. The acting is there from everybody, from the killer all the way down to the victim, to the to Bill Bailey, to Tubby, to uh, uh, a, um, Alex, to Andy. Nobody does a bad job here. I can't think of a single person. Um, you are absolutely correct in saying that it was well paced and I think well edited and well directed. Um, yeah, I didn't say that. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna give it a. Um, I, I'm I'm gonna. I think that it was a little bit slow. Not slow, but there were points that didn't need to be there, like the Don Swayze point, the uh, the Don Swayze uh-huh. part. Uh, so I'm gonna give it a one fourteen. I, I really like this a lot. I watched it twice. I've never watched an episode twice for this podcast because I usually know them so well. And I've always dismissed this one as sort of a piece of shit um, because it didn't ex- okay. it didn't belong in Columbo canon. Um, and it doesn't, really. No. Um, but it's still really good. Uh, and I'm going to pass it to you. Okay. I You know, we're, I think we're on the same page with this one. It, it's it is hard to review if you review it as a Columbo episode it's gonna not rate very good if yeah. you're gonna relate it as was it enjoyable TV yes it, it was very good it was very enjoyable um, and so it's it's kind of a, a dilemma there you've got two aspects do you do you, are we reviewing a Columbo episode on a Columbo podcast yes we are so I want to score it low uh, for that reason. I don't think, that, like you said, there's not very many Columboisms. He's not eating chili. There's no dog. <laughs> yes, you see the car um, briefly. Uh, he doesn't smoke the cigar. He's not wearing his normal attire. He does wear his jacket, but he's in a tux most of the time, mm-hmm. or he's in a you know bow tie. And, uh, it just didn't feel like Columbo. Um so it's, it's just really a hard one. I'm trying to remember how I rated Undercover. Because I, I remember having the same issue. It wasn't a Columbo episode, but it was a good episode. Well, Undercover was more Columbo-ish than this. I mean, we had more... Yeah. You know, he was more playing the part than he was here. Um, But yeah. as far as a mystery... I, I remember yeah, I kind of liked I d- Undercover. But... No, I didn't... Okay, that... Uh, thank you for reminding me. I did not enjoy the beginning of this episode. Uh, it gets better. But the beginning for me was I was looking for those obvious clues where the camera would hang on a particular item, like the cologne. Or what's with the mother? Uh, why is she going to bed early and she never, you never see her again? Is she drugged? Is she de- you know, there were, weird, there were uh, mis... Miss, is it misleads, misdirects? Yeah, red herrings. All red herrings. Red herrings yeah. all over at the very beginning. The first half of this episode, it's full of them. And it, it's very, if you're trying to take notes and you're trying to follow along, uh, it, I did not I did not enjoy that. Um, but what I will say, I did enjoy the acting, specifically the actors who played Melissa and uh, Rudy. Uh their scenes were so intense, yeah. Sean. Like the the scene where she finally gets out and she's in in that bedroom with the the um, the, the 
the display thing. I don't know what you call that. Yeah, the, the um, slide, the slideshow, the automatic slideshow. The slideshow, right? Uh, and and the uh, so she's looking at that, and there, the whole time the music is building up, it's building up, and all of a sudden it, it's it stops, it's silent, and you know as the audience he's behind her, and that it, and literally when the music stopped, Sean, I exclaimed out loud. Oh shit! Yeah, <laughs> I was. I knew. That, oh god, she's gonna get it. I was. I was scared for her, and that would not have been possible if it wasn't acted as well as it was. She was so um, good, and he was so good, and it drives me crazy that I cannot figure out who he is. Not figure out, but I can't find out who he is because he's uncredited. Almost like he didn't yeah. want to be credited for this because from now on he would be like typecast as a kidnapper, murderer, or whatever. Well. Yeah, I, I thought he was. I thought he was great. Yeah, he what was a wonderful really villain. Good. Yeah, I, I just like you mentioned earlier, where in, during the photos when you see Alex taking photos, who I did suspect immediately, um, he uh, Rudy is nowhere in any of those scenes, and so it's kind of like he just appears in mid mid episode as the villain. It would have been great to have something to show that he was there. Um, so yeah, it was very the, the tense scenes were perfect. They were played out. It was direct. Those scenes were directed really well. The editing was done great. But again, I'm I'm I'm, I'm with that dilemma where it's not a great Columbo episode, but it is a, a very entertaining show. I could watch just those scenes again. Yeah, I so, fucking watched it twice. I I uh, oh yeah. So the acting was superb. Uh, so out of 134, I think I'm being very generous by saying giving it an 80. Um, really? I don't, I that's, wouldn't want, that's, e- that's almost half. Is it? It is. A little above half. Okay, I'll give it a 90. I'll, 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 I, I just... I was so up, upset with the misdirect at the very beginning. But... It's not a bad episode, is what I'm trying to say. It's it it's not bad, but it's just not Columbo. It's not. Um, um, but if you were being told that, hey, you're going to watch this TV movie about a kidnapping, golly gee, that's a really good movie about a TV movie with a kidnapping. I mean, all the characters are great. Like Tubby. I, I love Tubby. Yeah. I thought he was hilarious. Yeah. I wanted to see more of him. Even though the scenes with him made no sense. Didn't need to be there. Uh, but th- they were great. Do you get the feeling that maybe this was, and I don't know if this is a fact, and th- that would require research, but that maybe this was a script that somebody had laying around, and they thought it would be a great TV movie of the week, and they're like, well, let's just attach this, Col- to, let's just stick it in Columbo. Well, you said it was related to a series of books, right? Yeah. Just like Undercover? Yeah, and... I, I don't know when that decision came around to, but well, the, these later episodes I noticed exec, executive producer Peter Falk, mm. and it was on Undercover as well. Uh. I'm wondering if Peter Falk went on a cruise, he took a bunch of books to read while he was on his cruise ship, and he came across this author and said, "This stuff is great. We're doing this. I'm making these Columbos." I could totally see that. I could totally fucking see that. Somebody did that. Um, that's possible, and and but um, but uh, they did it so well. It was really pretty good, and and I'm. This is the first time ever that, as a Columbo fan, that I'm going to just break down and say, I really like this. Um, blows the pants off of Undercover, um, but as a Columbo episode, I could live without it. Uh, yeah. So I'm. Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's kind of in that weird middle ground. Um, but anyways, okay. I, I mean, we both enjoyed it. Um, so yeah, definitely. I think it's definitely must watch. And we also enjoyed talking about it as well. I yeah, I thought because... we were gonna. I thought I thought it was a rough start at the beginning, but yeah, we did yeah. great. Yeah. All right. We we had feedback. We had two. Uh, we have three pieces of feedback. Two of which are from the same gentleman, Victor. Um, Victor J. He says, Dear Sean and Steve, 
Congratulations on completing Season 4 of the Columbo Confab Podcast. Your discussion of It's All in the Game was a strong finale to the current season, hmm. or series, and I think the pair of you have found your footing, especially with regard to the humor. Did you... I thought, Are we trying to be funny? I don't know. I don't know. Because we've been doing this for like nine years. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Okay, so... The Cher Denise fan club of one bit had me <laughs> laughing out loud. I also enjoyed the Alex Jones tangent. I kind of remember that, but I don't know why we talked about Alex Jones. I brought it up. I remember. The Cher Denise mm-hmm. fan club. No, there's fuck her. And not fuck her, but, you know, bless her heart. But she's another. Anyway, I'm not going to. Um, Yeah. Regarding the Columbo episode reviewed, I lean towards Sean's thinking on it. Ha ha ha, Steve. That's me, not him he said it's it's not the worst of the 90s episodes but it's not quite what i am accustomed to seeing when i sit down to watch colombo so i might rate it a six or a seven not having watched it in a while i'm going to go out on a limb and suggest that maybe it wasn't the fact that lauren was a woman that caught the attention of the denizens of barney's tavern when she entered but they weren't used to a woman of her class of her class coming mm-hmm. into there also yeah. okay. did, did either of you feel that the revelation of lauren and the other woman's relationship was similar to the revelation of faye dunaway's relationship to her sister in chinatown okay so this is a good point never, never, i never saw chinatown that's one movie i really need the rent okay i've always i always wanted to see that movie jack nicholson faye dunaway mm-hmm. uh directed by roman polanski Mm-hmm. Um, it's I've never seen it either all the way through, but I know what happens in the end. Um, I would recommend you know you may want to see that there, uh, Steve. Mm-hmm. Uh, knowing knowing it's a Roman Polanski film, that kind of bothers me. But go on. It's a what? It's a Roman Polanski film. I, it kind of bothers me, but go on. Uh, okay, yeah, I, I know. I'm not, not going to get political, yeah. but go on. That's that's not about being political. It's being moral, but. And, he says, and I believe Faye Dunaway actually won an enemy, Emmy for her performance. He's right. She did. I found out afterwards. Hmm. This continues to be an entertaining podcast, and I look forward to Series 5. Well, here we are. Episode 4 of Series 5. Beginning with the guy who gets bludgeoned with the rotting rabbit in repulsion. Speaking of Polanski, cheers, Victor. <laughs> Victor rewrote awesome. us. Um, actually, I've got a... I read this before, and I've got to... Uh, so um, the last episode of, of last season, we mentioned, we did It's All in the Game, and then we said we're going to do Dagger of the Mind next. And he said, mm-hmm. I'm surprised Sean doesn't know who Richard Basehart is. He was Admiral Nelson on Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, the killer he walks in, the, the killer in He Walks by Night, partially directed by Anthony Mann, Barbara Stanwyck's husband in Cry Danger, which plays like a cross between Nancy Drew and Jane Eyre, Ishmael and John Houston's Moby Dick, and he was the announcer in the 1984 Los Angeles Summer Olympics. Or maybe I'm just old. No, it's okay, Victor. You're not just the one who's old. We're old, too. Okay. So, uh, do you remember doing the the podcast of uh, Dagger of the Mind two months ago, Steve? No. Remind me of the the plot. It was the one in England with the two actors. Oh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So the gentleman, Richard Basehart, who is no longer with us, um, after we listened to that, I, uh, I went back and did some research, and I listened to one of our other, the other Columbo podcasts about it, and apparently, uh, we've, we've talked about things like this. Richard Basehart and his wife, now you know the gentleman that I have in mind, were driving down the highway one day when the car in front of them threw a dog out the window. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you did say that. Okay. I think that that was, like, quote-unquote, off-air. And after that happened, he and his wife sort of dedicated themselves to being sort of animal activists. Mm -hmm. Um, Good for them. I I applaud you as the owner of four animals, uh, cats, myself. Uh, Good, because I think that anybody who throws an animal out of their car window while it's moving has a special place in hell for them. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, it's an interesting thing about him. Um, obviously, he's no longer with us, but his, uh, his, his, his website still exists. 
And I think it might be maintained by his wife, but okay. Oh, that's sweet. And uh, one more final bit of feedback. This was just the other day, actually, that we got this. Um, Victor, I apologize. Uh, if it seems like it's, you know, like we haven't gotten to your email before, it's because of the way that we record. Anyway, it's a long story. Uh, Timey wibby wibbly wobbly. Uh, this one is from, uh, I don't know who it is, uh, Ryan G. He says, Guys! I love that he started his uh, his email, I think. <laughs> Guys! Exclamation mark. No, I'm sorry. But he did, but the subject heading did say, feedback! He said, guys, just thought I'd drop you a quick note with some feedback. Although I'm new to the Colombo podcast thing, and to Colombo in general, I've sampled all three of the Colombo podcasts that are available and come to the conclusion that I like yours the best. Okay. Oh, awesome. Okay. So, oh, so, that's so okay. Great. Okay. So, uh, all right. All right. I'm going to say, so, I, I, okay. Without naming. I'm going, put, I'm going to put my pants back on. Hold on. Okay. Go ahead. Without naming names, one, this is, one of the others has excellent content, but as an American, I find the heavy Scottish accents of the presenters incredibly distracting and often difficult to follow. And that would be Ian and, I'm sorry, I can't remember the co-host name. Um, I, maybe I should probably not have named them, but they have a very good Colombo podcast called The Colombo Podcast. Um, and they went through all these episodes chronologically, uh, and they finished a couple years oh, ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. The other podcast, which is the Just One More Thing podcast, mm -hmm. has lots of talking happening, but too little of it seems to deal with actually analyzing or explaining the episodes. You guys seem to have a great mix of anecdotal banter and analysis of content from the episodes themselves. Keep up the great work. I'll be listening. Signed Ryan wow. G. Now, in defense of the Just One More Thing podcast, um, although I think he's right in, in content of like a, analyzing like clues, because you know, Steve, I love clues. Um, <laughs> Just One More Thing podcast has a really good way of talking about the actors, like, oh, he was in this, and he also starred in this, and then he did this, yeah. this type of thing. Um, so, if you're into sort of reminiscing. Uh, uh, about TV, that's a really good podcast to listen to. I am not going to say a bad thing about either one of our other, the other Colombo podcasts. Um, hmm. So yeah, so that brings us to uh, the conclusion um, where Steve We finally go back to the 70s. Thank yeah. the Lord. Yeah. Okay. I'm excited. So No more of these, these experimental non-Colombo Type episodes. Let's let's get back to the meat and potatoes of this series. Well, um, we're not out I'm... of the park yet, as as far as experimental goes. But uh, oh god, Steve, will you please spin the swinging wheel of the seventies now? I'm more than happy to do so. Here we go. And it's going to be from the first season of Columbo. <laughs> Suitable first season? The first season. Oh boy. I I know it's the first. Suitable for framing starring Ross Martin as a art critic. It, I think I may have seen this one. Suitable for framing. So uh Okay. I'm looking forward to it. Okay. I have one final thought uh for you tonight, Sean, before we uh go on our separate ways okay so andrew uh we find out andrew has some people that hate him mm -hmm. uh, he's he, he pulled a gun on a guy and he killed the brother of somebody so we find out that person is uh albert wagner which is played by don swayze so his brother would have been patrick swayze so did andrew shoot and kill patrick swayze You in trouble, child. Thank you for listening to the Colombo Confab Podcast. To email us with a comment or question, 
write to columboconfab at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter at columboconfab and look for us on Facebook. If you're enjoying the show, please leave us some happy reviews on iTunes. I love clues. Hello, I'm Sean, and I'm the host of the Thousand and One Movies podcast, based on the book A Thousand and One Movies You Must See Before You Die. Each episode, I randomly pick a film from the book and spend about 10 minutes talking about its director, the cast, the genre, and my personal thoughts on the merits of the film. Each delicious yet bite-sized episode contains information about a film from practically any genre, any country, or any year. Check us out on iTunes and we'll send you free cookies. Some restrictions apply.